but they go from there immediately to it's women's fault because they are denying men their natural rights as men, meaning if only we could just have sex with whoever and whatever we want, whenever we want, then maybe we wouldn't have to rape you. Now, I don't have to be a mind reader to know that right now you're most likely thinking, what the ever-loving fuck did I just listen to? Who is this woman? A prison social worker that got trapped on a cell block full of hardcore sex offenders? Perhaps she was visiting Sweden and wandered into the wrong neighborhood. North Korea, maybe? Or, if you're current on the world of modern academic feminism, you might think this is a women's studies professor giving a batshit crazy interpretation of men's rights activists, perhaps even giving her take on the Red Pill movie. If you pick the latter, you'd be right. So, it is with apologies in advance for the oncoming assault against your intelligence and your sense of sight and sound that I introduce you to Rebecca Sullivan a professor of women's studies at the University of Calgary. Rebecca has allegedly seen the Red Pill movie, and Rebecca is scared. She's scared by men's rights activists. She is scared by the Red Pill movie, and she is scared by the words, feminism is cancer. Here, witness the terror. Did you ever imagine that you would see the words, feminism is cancer? at an event that's happening at your workplace. It was frightening. And again. It was frightening. Okay, now that we've established that words are scary, especially to institutional gender ideologues, I think it's important to note that saying feminism is cancer is just a tad unfair to a great many kinds of cancer. Feminism, which we can rightly call stupid cell carcinoma, however, is generally impervious to intervention, as we will see with a more expansive examination of this interview. Let's take it from the top and review the entire insufferable five minutes of this woman's pathogenic rantings. At the center of this controversy is the film The Red Pill. For a look at the film and the culture of men's rights activism it deals with, we've asked Rebecca Sullivan to join us. She's a professor of women's studies at the University of Calgary. Okay, right. Before we even get to crazy pants, I have to point out that in an effort to help viewers understand the Red Pill movie, a film that is a scorching indictment of modern gender feminism and which gives men's rights activists an unbiased platform to air their views, CBC News doesn't request an interview with the film's director, any of the cast, or any men's rights activist, but instead calls in a women's studies professor that is scared of words and ideas. Okay, clear enough. Let's move on. So let's start with the controversy, if we can. Did you ever imagine that you would see the words feminism is cancer at an event that's happening at your workplace? It was frightening. Yeah, we got that. You're terrified. Next. I won't deny that. It was sickening to wake up in the morning. Um, I know it, ha it broke last night, but you know I made the mistake of staying off Twitter for a whole hour. And uh, I wake up in the morning getting ready for work, and this is what I see. You know, this is, this is scary. Okay, lady, everyone understands you're scared. Now can we please start getting to why? And I think we have to name it as scary. I think we've been turning a blind eye, making excuses, calling it, you know, underground or, you know, a minor extremist movement or, you know, pathetic. Yeah, it is pathetic, but it's also dangerous and really, really scary. Well, we're finally getting somewhere, but in a developmentally impaired sort of way. So far, it is frightening. It is scary. And it's really, really scary. I see rape victims which I suppose is a good deal scarier than just scary. It's also dangerous, which I suppose is another way of saying that it's scary. And now it's also pathetic. But it's clear that Sullivan doesn't want you to let that distract you from the fact that it's scary. Still, while we know it is scary, we are nonetheless not quite sure what it is or why it is so scary. 
Let's see if Professor Shaky Knees is ever going to let us in. Uh, so the term red pill didn't actually originate with men's rights no. community at all. <laughs> Can you tell us where it came from and basically what it means now, how it's evolved? Yeah, and I think you know well, people have to kind of bear with me as I explain this because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's fundamentally a bad metaphor. But the red pill, of course, comes from the film The Matrix. You can take the blue pill and go about your merry way, or you can take the red pill and enter the matrix. Well, then the um, a, 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 a group on Reddit. Okay, so here we go. A group on Reddit, she says, taking her fake news talking points from the unctuous and bovine propagandist David Futrell. We've seen this canard trotted out repeatedly since the movie's release. The attempt here is to tie the Red Pill movie to the Red Pill Reddit in order to discredit the former. Indeed, the Red Pill Reddit is more or less a cesspool of mostly bellicose, overtly gynocentric millennials who took a wrong turn at puberty and stepped in their own shit. But of course, Cassie J didn't even know about the Red Pill subreddit till she was well into production of the Red Pill movie, and understandably so, since that subreddit didn't exist till years after AVFM and other men's venues had adopted the term the red pill into the common vernacular. Jay did go to the trouble to explain the difference between MRAs, MGTOW, and the Red Pill subreddit in the movie, and to point out that MRAs and the Red Pill Redditors, and I quote, don't see eye to eye, unquote. One group literally has nothing to do with the other. So what we know now, assuming that Professor Sullivan has seen the movie, is that she's afraid and she's a liar. She is trying to conflate members of the men's human rights movement with a group of pimple-faced, unsuccessful pussy hounds whom she alleges want to rape everything in sight, although we have to assume that they have never laid eyes on her. Let's move on, shall we? We're um, discussing not just men's rights, but also the pickup artist movement and how um, you know, women kind of owe them sex. And so the criticism is that the blue pill is the women you know, saying that they want to be treated with respect and they want equality. The red pill is a metaphor for what women really want the real world, which is not equality apparently, okay, is domination and subjugation. That now we move from liar to bald-faced, very bad liar. First, for those of you who haven't seen it, and as I just pointed out, the red pill points to PUAs in the form of the red pill subreddit and informs viewers that they are completely separate from MRAs and indeed that we are different enough in our approach to sexual politics to not like each other very much. That was the extent of the movie's investment in the subject. There is no critique of PUAs to be had related to the film because the film was never about that group. Sullivan wants you to think that there was such an examination and indeed wants people who have not seen the film to construct a non-existent bridge between MRAs and PUAs so that the end result is a narrative painting MRAs as advocates for the domination and subjugation of women. It's a ridiculous stretch to you consider the elasticity of the average feminist's relationship with the truth. No one watching the movie would come away with the impression Sullivan is selling, so she is counting on not being questioned by her interviewer, who is obviously quite accommodating along those lines. So, one feminist liar, one feminist media hack liar. Same shit, different day, right? But for the sake of everyone involved, I want to correct the oh-so-correctable version of red pill versus blue pill offered by the uneducated professor. The red pill is dispensing with chivalry and deference to female sensibilities, thus to offer the respect and equality to women feminists have demanded for so long with such sneering condescension. The blue pill, on the other hand, is the tradition of listening to cackling bacillists like Sullivan without questioning anything they have to say or holding them to account for any of their lies. Now that I've cleared that up, let's plow on. That's what women really want. Okay. 
Well, the film has generated a lot of controversy. Um, do you think us even sitting here talking about it actually gives it any some undue attention, normalizes some of its arguments? I'm certainly afraid of that. I'm certainly afraid of that. And um, I think that we do have to be mindful of that. And maybe a year or two, I would have said, yeah, I'm not talking about it. Let's not give it any attention. But here's the thing. It has been mainstreamed now. People are talking about it. We have a leadership candidate for the Conservative Party of Canada tweeting out to an elected politician with Wild Rose, Maxine Bernier and Derek Fildebrandt, tweeting out red pill memes. Wink. Right? In your it's a wink. Interpretation. Yeah. yeah, it's a wink. And we know it's a wink because what do we have? We have the Wild Rose on campus and the Conservative Party of Canada on campus jointly hosting this film. It has been mainstreamed. And what this, what this culture relies on is the um, naivete of decent Canadians, of saying there's no way people really believe this. There's no way people are really acting upon this. And certainly there could be no way that they are infiltrating our respected political parties in Canada. First, my apologies for breaking down this five minute clip into so many parts. My job is to keep up with the lies, distortions, misdirects, and conspiracy theories. Professor Sullivan kept me very busy in that regard as there was something of each every time she opened her mouth. This last bit, though, finally got to the meat of her little scheme and to what is apparently frightening her out of her Doc Martens. Elements of the Red Pill narrative, not the confabulated version of it offered by Sullivan, but the reality of Red Pill thinking, are indeed going mainstream. The world is waking up to the mountain of destructive lies furthered by those of Sullivan's ilk, and people are, quite frankly, getting more than a little tired of it. We now live in a feminist-weary society. People are tired of the lies, the politically correct gags, and the wholesale reliance on victim politics from a group of idiots who also, and I note with great irony, claim that one of their biggest problems is that the culture fails to recognize their power and capability. It is the quickly degrading tolerance for feminism and other elements of the modern left that played a major role in delivering the United States one hell of a surprising new president. And even in Canada, where their hard right is left of Justin Trudeau, the voices of reason over gender hysteria are starting to weave their way into political discourse. I'd hardly call a red pill meme being tweeted or even a conservative campus group hosting the red pill movie a watershed moment, but you can bet it is enough to scare the living shit out of intellectual cowards like Sullivan, whose whole shtick is totally dependent on owning the discourse. Her only possible response to the now looming threat of diversity of ideas, since self-examination, accountability, and any measure of integrity aren't options, is to up the fear factor even higher and to create a boogeyman out of the opposition. With that in mind, here's her summation, her thoughtful overview of what the Red Pill movie and the men's rights movement are about. So let's cut through that naivete then and tell me about what the film is and what people it portrays. What do they stand for? Um, they stand for the right of men to have um, mostly sexual rights. It's, it's the right of men to um, engage in any sexual activity that they want and you know, have entitlement to women's bodies. Um, the men's rights movement points to a number of, of, of very real issues in our society that there are very few resources available to men who experience domestic or gender or sexual violence, um, to the fact that um, uh, suicide rates are very high for men, incarceration culture, high dropout rates, lowering participation in post-secondary um, education. These are all very real and pressing and urgent issues. But they go from there immediately to it's women's fault because they are denying men their natural rights as men. Meaning, if only we could just have 
sex with whoever and whatever we want, whenever we want, then maybe we wouldn't have to rape you. Well, I guess that is exactly why it's controversial. <laughs> exactly think, why it's controversial. And, uh, we thank you very much for coming in and explaining this because it has been a bit of a cloudy issue for many. So, And that's, and that's what they're banking on. As I said, they're banking on decent Canadians not understanding what they're saying. Oh. And we need to understand what is being said. Rebecca Sullivan, thank you for helping us do that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And there you have it. The men's rights movement claims to be concerned with male suicide, men in education, fathers' rights, male victims of domestic violence, and other problems facing men and boys, but only as a segue, a launching pad to further our agenda to dominate and rape women. Who knew Cassie J., a feminist filmmaker, spent three and a half years of her life, exhausted sacrificial levels of money, suffered a torrent of abuse from feminist ideologues, had one professional door after another slammed in her face, saw her previously reliable investors walk away, all so she could make a movie in support of a bunch of unrepentant rapists who think that men kill themselves, drop out of school, and can't get help when they're battered in relationships because society won't let them rape whoever they want. That is what Rebecca Sullivan expects you to believe, knowing full well that a good number of blue pill people will dutifully follow suit. After all, look at the response from the empty-headed interviewer who did everything short of going down on her to lend a hand. Sullivan made direct reference to being afraid seven times in that five-minute clip, and that is not counting on several references she made to really scary things like rape, domination, subjugation, and the like. It was a damsel routine designed to urge some immediacy and force behind efforts to censor men's advocates, to dissuade politicians from joining the now-growing tendency to call out feminism, for the deceitful ideology of hate that it is. Rebecca Sullivan is a woman standing on a chair, shrieking at a mouse and waiting for people, mostly men, to come out of the woodwork and rescue her. And this is one of the multitude of reasons why feminism is such a pathetic joke of an ideology. Feminists have spent 50 years selling the idea that women are as strong and capable as men, and yet when even one of their supposedly most potent and erudite proponents, a woman of high academic prestige and stature, encounters dissent from her ideas, she indulges herself in the powerless wailing of a little girl, regurgitating one lie after another and turning herself into a cartoonish caricature of Nell, tied to the railroad tracks by snidely whiplash, pleading for someone, anyone, to come to her nightly rescue. If this is an empowered woman, then women are well and truly fucked. Pure and simple, folks, feminism is cancer. It's a tumor on the sexes that needs to be cut out with extreme prejudice. And Rebecca Sullivan is afraid of the red pill because when she looks at it, she doesn't see a pill. She sees a scalpel, and that's good enough for me. That concludes another talk from an ear from in. As always, I hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.